2009 is the 40th anniversary of man's first walk on the moon. And the person we are meeting in this show is hoping to be the first British astronaut to walk on the moon. We are meeting Major Tim Peake, Britain's next astronaut, in this edition of Young Eagles. Major Tim Peake has recently been selected by the European Space Agency for astronaut training. He joined the Army Air Corps in 1992 and is a highly skilled Apache pilot. He is currently a test pilot and has very kindly joined us at the museum to talk to us about going into space. When you joined the Army in 1992, did you ever think that you would end up as an astronaut? No, I didn't, I have to be honest. Um, it was always um, you know, a sort of dream to, to get involved in, in space from an early age, but that developed um, in my teenage years into a passion for flying. So uh, I, I then joined the cadets at school and uh, went on a number of RAF gliding trips, etc., and flew small fixed wing aircraft. So when I first uh, joined the Army, um, I, my intention was just to, uh, to become a pilot and be as good as I possibly could be as a pilot. Um, and then the opportunity came along to, uh, to go for astronaut selection. What are you currently working on, and would they mind you moving on to, be an a to become an astronaut? Well, I'm currently working down at Augusta Westlands as a test pilot, and um, I'm working primarily on Apache projects and also Lynx projects. Uh, there's an awful lot of work uh, going on at the factory this year with the re-engineering of the Army's Lynx fleet, and also the new uh, future Lynx, which is now the, the Wildcat or the AW159 aircraft, which is going to fly later this year. So uh, it's been a very busy period in the short time that I've been working at Augusta Westlands. I've thoroughly enjoyed my time with the company. They've been extremely supportive. And um, I was doing the best job in the world, in my eyes, and now I'm going on to, to the, the next step forward, which uh, I never thought would, would, I'd have the opportunity to do. When did you apply for a job as an astronaut, and where do you find a job like that advertised? <laughs> well, it was actually about 18 months ago, and it was advertised on the internet. And the European Space Agency had a big uh, advertising campaign uh, across not just uh, the 18 member states that make up the Space Agency, but over the whole of Europe. Um, and they were after um, high caliber individuals with either a scientific degree or a piloting skills, either or. Uh, and that was the criteria for application. Um, and on top of that, you had to have a basic level of medical fitness. Um, and, uh, and from there, it was an online application. So it really was quite straightforward. So have you always been interested in space travel? I have. More recently, as a test pilot, um, you get involved in aviation and space-related um, industries. They're, they're sort of quite closely related, and a lot of the technology is shared between um, aviation and space. Uh, so from, uh, in the last sort of five years, I've always had a sort of close ear to the ground as to be what's going on in the, in the space arena, and have been interested by it. So when I saw the application for astronaut selection, um, it was, for me, a natural uh, decision to make. Uh, as a test pilot to attempt uh, to go for astronaut selection. What missions are you likely to go on? Well, the, the main missions that are being run at the moment are to the International Space Station. And they're a mixture of either short duration missions for resupply, crew change, and also the space station is still under construction. There's still two more modules that have yet to be put on the space station, which is planned for next year. And then once the space station is fully up and running, uh, the, you'll be looking at a six-month tour of duty up on the space station for the long duration missions. So by the time we've finished all of our training, that's what we'll be focusing on is the six-month long duration missions. So hopefully over the next few years, we're going to have uh, a lot of major scientific and medical research done on the space station and a lot of benefit to society we'll see from, uh, from those experiments. What will you have to do for your astronaut training and how long will it take to prepare for a space trip? Well, the astronaut training starts in September and it's going to be 18 months for basic training. And after that 18 month period, we're then eligible for a mission assignment. But if it's your first mission, then um, you have to do about three years of mission specific training. Um, and basically you have to become an expert on both the space station and all the different laboratories that are up there and all of the uh, delivery systems. So the Soyuz um, rocket system, you have to know as well in great detail. On top of that, the two languages spoken are Russian and English. So everybody has to be fluent in Russian, so that's a major part of the training as well. 
So uh, there's a lot of, of work ahead, a lot of classroom study ahead, but also a lot of fun um, practical training as well, um, such as the parabolic flights where you practice weightlessness uh, for about 22 seconds on every um, parabola. Um, and we also do a lot of diving training in what's called a neutral buoyancy facility because underwater uh, with the, the neutral buoyancy it's not weightlessness but it's as close as you can get to practicing um, EVA, the extravehicular activity, the spacewalking. So uh, that, that is fascinating and I think I'm looking forward to that training the most probably. On a space mission, what would your daily routine be? Um, the daily routine will be very tightly scheduled and there's a number of different experiments to be run. And that's what a lot of people back at Mission Control um, will be working for and to help you do that. And in fact, they schedule your day from start to stop, including breaks and including exercise training as well. Um, and that's all factored in. So on top of the experiments, obviously, there's a lot of maintenance activity to be done to make sure that the space station is in good working order as well. How many hours sleep do you get in a day? And, well, how do you know whether it's day or night or what time it is? Because it's dark all the time in space. Yeah, I mean, the space station is orbiting once every 90 minutes. <clears throat> so in, in a normal Earth day, obviously, you do a number of space days, if you like. With regards to sleep, um, I think you're scheduled for about a normal 8 to 10 hour break uh, every evening um, to try and get a, a normal um, night's sleep, if you like. Um, but it's, uh, I have heard that um, some astronauts like to do things such as strapping, um, strapping a foam pillow to the head, because obviously in weightlessness, you can sleep completely upright. Um, and if you haven't got that sort of comfort factor, it, it helps you sometimes to, uh, to get to sleep if you have something like a pillow strapped to your head. So does your mobile phone work in space and can you call home? Uh, a mobile phone wouldn't, um, but yes, you can call home. Um, and in fact, yesterday we had a, uh, a meeting at ESTEC, which is one of the ESA centres in the Netherlands, and we had a telephone conference with the space station, which was fantastic, and we got to speak to Frank de Vinner, who is a Belgian um, astronaut who's currently up in space from the European Space Agency. So yes, you do have very good, very clear communications with the space station, but no mobile phones. On the space station, there's no gravity, so... How do you go to the toilet? <laughs> um, well, everything is, is sort of bagged up and made sure that there's no leakage or anything. It's a bit like um, on uh, the Apache, for example, on long duration uh, missions, you have uh, travel johns so that you can actually go to the loo whilst you're uh, sitting in the cockpit and it'll be the same sort of principle on the space station. Uh, they do actually have, um, as part of the life support systems, they have incredibly efficient recycling. Um, and believe it or not, an, uh, an awful amount, a large amount of moisture is extracted from the space station from humidity, from the air that you breathe out, and also from uh, recycled urine. Uh, and it's all purified, recleaned, and put back into the uh, fresh water system. So uh, the amount of, it's all in, in an attempt to try and reduce the amount of fresh water that is utilized on the space station each day. Do your family worry about you? Um, I think my mum probably worries. She, she, if I had to choose anyone, she'd be the one who worries. But my, my wife is very supportive and she's uh, ex-military herself, uh, having served in Bosnia and Kosovo herself. And, and she completely understands and the, the risks and, that are involved and she also knows the, the job I do. So she also understands um, the safety aspects involved and, and we do uh, you know, make everything as absolutely as safe as possible. So uh, yes, there, there's naturally we'll be worried at times, but not unduly. This is the 40th anniversary of man walking on the moon. But if you were the first Brit on the moon, what would you do when you got up there? <laughs> I think if I had the opportunity, it would just be nice to, to look back and just reflect and to, to view the Earth from the moon, I think must be the most incredible and the most beautiful sight that uh, you could possibly see. Um, I think with all of these things, though, there's, uh, uh, on, on missions, your, your time that you have to yourself is probably very short yeah. and everything is very structured and on a timelines and routine. So uh, it's one of those things I think you'll just have to build in perhaps a few seconds here or there or a minute if you could just to, to reflect on the situation and, and uh, enjoy it for yourself. Boy, Jerry, that old earth is sure looking small. That's all for this show and we would all like to say a big thank you to Major Tim Peake for coming to see us today. Over the summer, the Army Air Corps will be standing guard at Buckingham Palace and Windsor Castle. In the next show, we will be with them out on the drill square as they prepare for this big event. So come and join us on 1st of August for the next episode of Young Eagles.